Okay, with Graham Northrup, Gift is a short film played at the Fantasy Sci-Fi Film Festival. It's definitely a fantasy film, that's for sure. I'm so curious about films like this because it's obviously from your inside your imagination. What's the seed of this idea? Was this like a story before or like a novel series? Like, or this was just like a standalone short film? Um, <clears throat> it was a it was a standalone short film um, with the idea that, you know, I would love to expand it, you know, later on. Uh, but um, the, the the seed of the idea came from from this actually working a lot with my wife and, and other other people um, who we find that they 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 give of themselves, but they keep giving and giving and giving until it drains them and they you know they they burn themselves out basically. And so I, I thought of this idea: what if there was literally a person who could who could heal people and and, and but it, but it also drained her. But she's she's young and hasn't yet managed how to. Uh, or, or, you know, figure out how to manage that power that she has. And so, yeah, then I built the story around that and sci-fi is my favorite genre. So that's the way I, that's the way I went with it. So the, uh, when you just described that, I'm thinking the Stephen King novel uh, or the Stephen King film, The Green Mile, because that happens with that character too, right? Where he heals somebody, but then he gets, he, he his energy drains, I guess, right? Yeah, where he has to he has to get rid of it somehow or expunge it or whatever. But um, yeah, it's, it's it's a similar idea that there's this unique person out there who can do these things. But then, uh, yeah, my, my, the way my story developed is, you know, she obviously needs to figure out how to use it, but then there's other people around her who exploit it. And uh, that, that becomes a problem for her as well. So, well, it's, it's human nature in a nutshell, right? So you know, someone's always going to exploit something, something powerful, I guess. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so tell so you wrote, so this is like you said, that this could be a proof of concept for like a TV series or, or, or a movie, but you wrote it as a, as a 20 page kind of short, short script, I guess, right? Exactly. Yeah, I, I knew I wanted to leave it open, uh, but I did want it to feel like a standalone film, um, you know, that just left people's audiences imagine it, uh, left the audience's imagination open to possibilities um and what could happen to her what could happen to the young man in there and then of course what happens to jaeger because that's that's an interesting twist in the in the story as well so but yeah i wanted it to feel like it was a, a standalone so the when you're writing the script like obviously the location is so key to your film and it seems very very specific like i'm like you're based in colorado so i'm assuming it's in the colorado mountains somewhere <laughs> in a general yeah. assessment did you when you were writing it did you know look okay, i can shoot it here i can shoot it there kind of thing were you thinking like as a, as a producer as a writer or producer yeah you know I, I live in this wonderful beautiful place up near aspen i live about a half an hour down the road from aspen colorado and it's just gorgeous up here and i thought you know the the, the mountains and the and the terrain can be a, a character in the story a little bit um but and i also like to pay tribute to my home state of colorado as much as i can and do as much filming here as i can bring some of that industry here um, so yeah, when I was writing it, in fact, one of my, the, 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 the main actor, um, who plays Liam, he suggested, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we could do it in a, in the burn scar? We had a forest fire a few years ago and we could, we could be shooting it in this burn scar and that would make it look post-apocalyptic and all that stuff. Unfortunately, there'd been too much gro new growth in there and we couldn't get to it real easy. So we ended up scrapping that idea, but, but it, but this idea of a post-apocalyptic landscape, where there's factions who are fighting and and you know butting up against each other and and there's warlords who are you know and and some factions and some territories are worse than others and and that sort of a thing so um but in 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 this instance yeah they're in the mountains and they're escaping through the mountains to get away from the 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 the, the militia that's chasing them well let's 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 go uh, fortunately like there's a good fortune that they there was growth, I guess, in that area, I guess, right? That it's coming back. The yes, thank goodness. Yes, just unfortunate for the film itself, I guess, right? So. Yeah, yeah, no, but we, I mean, obviously, as you watch the film, you see that we, you know, we had some great locations. Some, yeah. we found that abandoned cabin just on, you know, on national forest land. So we're like, hey, can we use that? And they said, sure. So we, there's a, you know, that's in there, and um, yeah, just beautiful landscape and, um. Yeah, and I, and I, you know, I think it lends lends itself well to the story. This kind of hunt, you know, hide and go seek, you know, uh, mm -hmm. sort of storyline. And so uh, the the one actor does he actually cut himself in the in the wrist there in the wrist area? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I'm glad you ask. Uh, no, he did not. He did, you know, that was a sharp stick. He did not break his skin. The rest was, um, you know, compositing and you know special effects. There. Did you do that in post post production or? 
Well, so so we did AB blood on the on the stick itself, so it gave a little uh, red mark when yeah. you put it in, and then it, but it wasn't as red as we wanted it to be. So I went in afterwards and and sweetened it a little bit. It's very effective, that's for sure. Thank you. I'm glad yeah, it worked. I, if you asked him, he probably would have done it though, right? <laughs> He's committed. He's got. In fact, he he just got nominated for a best supporting actor for that role. So he was he was yeah. very committed. He's a well, it's well, it's one of those roles that like he can it, it can it's over the top of course but it's like yeah. it, if he he's got to stay in, inside the lens of the of the film you're making too right like sometimes actors can go off a little bit on a journey in their own little character but that character has to little has to be a little bit grounded one would assume yeah yeah and the the idea we we didn't want him to be crazy we didn't want him to be this kind of insane person yeah. what we wanted him to come across as is damaged you know, someone who has been through hell and is now taking that hell out on other people. And so that's what throws him for a loop is when when Kirsten, you know, does does her thing with him. He's like, wait, what's going on here? And so, um, you know, that, so just the idea that it, 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 all of his experiences have caused him to act in a certain way. And then she yeah. contravenes that and, and, and it opens up new possibilities for him. So you, so the, the genesis is that is like the military wants her powers, I guess. Right. Yeah, I mean, this guy wants to keep his soldiers in the fight, so the commander sends out his people to b bring her back and keep keep healing his soldiers, so he can send them back out to the fight. Oh, so well, well you can't blame the guy, right? So for trying, I guess. Right. Of course, <laughs> you, know, he, you know he doesn't come across as the best kind of person either. You know, when you first see him, he's uh, you know roughing some guy up. Maybe no, they're the, they're the antagonists. Like you've 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 right. you've uh, found that line between the good and evil, I guess. Right. So. Yeah, and it was a fun, it was a fun process kind of fleshing out those characters and then helping the actors, you know, get get where they needed to be for those. It was good. It was fun. Because during the, the the pursuits, we want we're 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 rooting for these characters, right? To yeah. to get away from the military people, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. And for so sure. tell me about like shooting out there, like in, in the in the wood, like a lot, like I said, a lot of it's in the woods out there. I'm assuming it's yeah. it was hard to get your the crew and the cast out there and yeah. Tell me about the, that process. Uh, the first location in particular was very difficult. The, the one you see in the opening scene, um, mostly because, you know, we could bring our cars in a certain distance, but then we had to hike up a mountain about a quarter mile. And um, it was, it, it rained, snowed, and had sunshine uh, all on the same day. And so continuity was a challenge, but um, but also just getting up and down the mountain with, you know, carrying sea stands and sandbags and camera equipment and all that stuff. And it was very cold. So yeah, it was a challenge for the crew, but I'm glad we got it out of the way on the first day because the next three days were actually we we yeah, we spent four days filming, um, and uh, yeah, that one was the toughest physically, uh, but we got it done and and it looks great. So and then the rest of the times were just you know we we tried to find as remote a locations as possible, but also accessible by at least our RV. You know, you can get in there at least a little ways. Um, you know, can get back to it as needed. Yeah, because you, you're using like the 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 background is your production i guess you have to you had to you had to i guess create the the military kind of like camp i guess right you had yep. to create that that sequence yeah so that was a it was an rv sales rv and trailer sales lot we talked to the owner said hey you know can we come film in your back backyard essentially and you know there was already uh, barbed wire up you know on the top of the fence and it looked kind of industrial so we figured this might be a location that an ad hoc military might have come in and and made a you know a base out of or whatever and so we dressed it a little bit got some camo netting and other things one of our guys one of our, our my producers co-producer's husband had a flamethrower and we're like oh we got to put that in there um so right now it's just sitting in the background but uh, yeah we have a, a flamethrower in there and we have you know uh, set up extras to make it look like there was stuff going on in the background. And and most of the scene, or at least the first third of that whole sequence is a one shot. So, you know, we're, we're traveling with the commander and seeing all this stuff going on mm -hmm. around. So that took some setup. Um, but yeah, I, th I thought it turned out pretty well. Are you a fan of uh, Westerns at all? Because it had a certain Western vibe to it when I'm watching your film. You know, I, I, I do, I do like Westerns. I don't watch them all the time. I most recently, I just watched um, True Grit, the, the remake, the Coen brother. Yeah, remake. totally. Um, it's another one of those tracker uh, films, I guess. Right? Exactly. But, you yeah. know, and he's carrying this girl and and then there's a guy, you know, the, the, the brother is carrying his sister in mine. And so, yeah, there were some definite similarities in there. I don't think I was channeling it when I was writing it or, or directing it, but maybe just there were some seeds there in the background that were. Yeah. Cause it does have that vibe, right? Like the, the searchers or like John Ford. Yeah. 
it does have that kind of like vibe to it. So I don't know if like. Yeah. And a lot of post-apocalyptic stories kind of end up as Westerns because civilization has now broken down and you're at, you're, you're back on the frontier again yeah. and you're trying to survive out in this, you know, this wasteland, you know, think fallout. But um, yeah, all these, uh, you know, these motifs, I think they, they, they come to the fore in post-apocalyptic fiction, fiction, because yeah, you're, you're going from town to town, settlement to settlement, trying to uh, avoid the bad guys and trying to find good guys and trying to survive off the land. You know, it's all, it's all very much tied, you know, the Western um, it's very similar to the Western vibe. So. Yeah. hundred percent. So tell me about your cast. You, we, we referenced the one gentleman, uh, yeah. but the female, like the sister, mm -hmm. she's great. And she's like fantastic in the film. Where did you like, where'd you find Thank her? You. Where'd you find the rest of the cast? Yeah. So I wrote this with her in mind. She was a student of mine. I've taught theater for 25 years and she was one of my students. She's now, she's a senior in high school. She's graduating this oh, year. Wow. She's young. Yeah. 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 She's very young. She's 17, maybe 18 now. And um, so when I was, I had, I had 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 her in a class and I knew she was good. So I thought, you know what, if I'm going to write a story that's going to be shot locally, I'm going to use, use the resources that I have. And so um, I wrote it for her um, with her in mind. And then I did, I did go ahead and audition her and, and she was just like I thought she was great for it. So we, we cast her. And then um, there was the, 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 her brother, um, his name is Elijah Pettit. I've worked with him before um, on various projects, another film of mine, and then some other, uh, other films and, and theater projects. And and so I knew he was good and had a, had a great look on film. So uh, cast him and then we just cast a wider net for those other supporting roles and got a guy for the commanders from Denver, Colorado, which is about three and a half hours away. Uh, the lieutenants from um, Salt Lake City, Utah, which is about five hours away. And then um, Jaeger uh, is from Georgia, which is a couple of states away. So, oh, wow. Yeah, um, more, than the, more than a couple of states away. Yeah, it's yeah, back, the back southeast. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, and then uh, and then the extras were all locally, you know, friends of ours and local actors and things like that that we brought on board. So you got some, you got a couple of fight scenes, the, the, the specifically the one with the sister and the brother and the, mm -hmm. and the blood guy. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so tell me about <laughs> doing, doing that, those, those scenes. Uh, did you like, did, like, like, how, did, did someone choreograph those scenes for you? Like, what was the process? Yeah, so I have a friend named Sean Jeffries. He's uh, he's a all around theater guy and film guy, and he's a he's a fight choreographer. So I got him on board to to choreograph <laughs> the fight, and um, I kind of gave him the parameters and kind of what we were going for, and he designed this fight. And then we we had a day of rehearsal where they spent about three or four or five hours, um, you know, going through the fight scene. Um, and I came and watched it and gave him some feedback, all that stuff. And, and uh, yeah, came up with this fight. And then on the day, which was yeah, a couple of days, uh, it was our second day of shooting. Um, we did the fight and, you know, obviously we're adjusting to parameters on the live set. You know, we, we find out that there's like a stump in the grass where we're trying to fight and, you know, and having to work around that and, uh, and things like that. And just, you know, working with, with the dynamics of the camera and, you know, what, what are we doing? Shaky cam? Are we doing, you know, what, that sort of thing? How much are we doing in close up? How much are we doing wide? So make all those adjustments. And, um, it took, it took a large portion of our day, but, um, I think it turned out really well. And, and of course, when you sweeten it with sound and post it, uh, you know, it, uh, increases the effectiveness all the more. And, um, yeah, I think we feel for the characters when, when all the, when the stuff happens. So that's, that was my goal. Yeah, you totally set it up. It's a, it's the best way to describe a good fight scene where like there's there's emotional context where we care who's gonna live live or die. I guess right. So exactly. So when he gets pardon the the spoiler, but when he gets stabbed, uh, it's pretty it's pretty effective. It's a very effective scene. Thank you. Yeah, we we were hoping that would be the case, and um, you know, and just I think the actors really pulled it off. I think that that that's the key there is that you know it was a they they brought a great deal of authenticity to it, and then of course yeah you you all the post production sound and all that stuff really just really brings it brings it to the fore. Um, and yeah, and and you're worried about them. You're really you're. In fact, when we were watching it with um, you know live audiences, people gasping uh, when that happens, and that's that was like music to my ears. You know, because knowing that they were emotionally invested, yeah. and then up up at that moment they they responded vocally. So that was that was really gratifying. Okay, so you got to tell us how did you do the eye scene? Okay, well, um, so we wanted to go as practical as possible. 
So um, oh, I had my props. Give people guy. context. The one, the the gentleman, uh, the 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 bad guy, the antagonist has like a patch, and then yeah. the scene where like his eye socket come comes comes out, and one one exactly. assumes that he's got his eyes in real life are are okay. Yes, yeah, his okay. he's got the actor has real two real eyes. Okay, so, good so eyes. Go ahead. I just want to give people context that they haven't seen. Yeah, the film. absolutely. And um, so his eyes is coming. His cyborg eyes is coming out at one point in the film. Yeah. And so one, the first step was to make it look like it was popping out. So what we did, we, we rigged up a balloon behind his eye patch. And then there's someone standing behind with a bike pump, uh, pumping down when we say action and it balloons that eye patch out. So it feels like there's something pushing on it from behind. Um, <clears throat> and then we cut away and then we cut back to, he's got it in his hand. That's this prop of a, you know, cyborg eye. And he, you know, and he's and he's pulling it out, and and there's blood. There's, you know, our makeup artist is dripping blood through the top of the eye patch out of frame, and so it's dripping down. And then, um, and then the thing that really sells it for me is uh, Daniel, the actor. You know, he, those the wires that are behind it. He he pulls it out, and then it kind of thunks. He it thunks it out, so it really feels like it's it's coming from somewhere. Yeah. And then of course he pulls off the eye patch, and lo and behold, his his real eye is is back. It's healed. Pushed out the cyborg guy. Um. So that was yeah, that was just a fun fun scene to do, and we only had like one or two takes on the whole thing because we didn't have time to like clean up all the blood and start over again and all that stuff. So we we got it in just a couple of like we I think the camera just kept rolling and we did it just a couple of times and um, yeah, and we got it. It was fun. That's amazing. So, uh, and then, and like, so post production is obviously key to your film. You said you referenced that you kind of touched some things up. But I want to ask you about your. You, you mentioned it before. Let me ask you about your sound design. Who did your sound design? Um, a friend of mine named Dave Taylor, who owns a recording studio um, nearby in Carbondale, Colorado, and he's a fellow filmmaker as well. And he, um, as uh, when we were doing the fundraising campaign for this film, he actually donated his services as in post production sound, and so I was like, sweet. Um, and so yeah, he he we gave it to him, and um, <clears throat> yeah, a lot a lot of really subtle stuff that you know, twig snapping and and you know, footsteps and 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 wind blowing and all that stuff, things that you don't really think about directly when you're watching it, but but create the ambience, the environment that that you're that we're living in in that world um and then some song selections and things like that that went in there as well um so yeah it just it just really sweetened the natural uh ambience of the of the film and yeah you know and, and punches and and things like that sweeten the fight scene um a bit and so yeah it really it, he really created a soundscape that that suited the film yeah 100 percent. And, and then so the who did the edit who was the editor i edited I'm assuming, yeah, you you seem yeah. to have that personality to do that, yeah. Yeah, I edited, you know, obviously you save money that way, I suppose too. But, um, but I did have lots of people look at it. You know, you can get kind of blind to your own, you know, yeah. biases and choices and stuff. So I had people look at it and tell me, you know, oh, this could be tighter. This could, you know, whatever that, those sorts of things. Um, so that was nice to get that feedback. And then we did have, I did some of the special effects, some of the compositing and whatnot. Um, but we did have a VX, VFX house, ethereal editorial did some of our, um, our VFX, um, the, the cyborg eye, um, when he's looking around the mountain and then, um, and, and the healing when, when the, when the flesh healing scenes, um, they did those and they actually won a, won a best VFX award for those. So. All right. So on your bio. It says that you have five daughters. You have five daughters. <laughs> yes, I do. That's true. Yeah, yeah, and um, they yeah my I've got a twenty two year old who's married, and then I've got a twenty year old, eighteen year old, fifteen year old, and twelve year old. And um, the the fifteen and twelve year old are still at home. The older three are all at college now. So the twenty two year old married. That's pretty. That's uh, yeah. She got married young, but um, yeah. No, he's he, her husband is great, and yeah, having a having a great time I, I you know I, I just my, my next step is that call when when they when they tell me I'm a grandfather I'm not I'm not ready for that one yet yeah. but <laughs> well I I'm, I'm sure you've been asked this before but uh I, I'm assuming that you and your wife just just will procreate females it's like that's just <laughs> yeah well yeah you know, the, the joke was we're just gonna keep trying until we get a boy but yeah we never ne never got a boy but um yeah we love kids and um yeah they've been a big part of our life our daughters are awesome they they're you know 
talented and and skilled and can't wait to see what they do in there when they grow up. But uh, yeah. Well, that's what happens though. Like a lot of families, right? They just, they get, they just, they just spawn one sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, just anecdotally in high school, I remember this one girl looks at me and she said, you look like the kind of guy who would have a lot of girls. And I'm like, how, what, how, how would you know that? What does that, what does that mean? And, yeah. but sure enough, I had a lot of girls. Do you remember who that person was? No, I don't remember her name. That's such a random thing to say. It, it was a very random thing. And I'm like, you know, 10 years later, it's coming true, you know, or starting to come true. So that's amazing. Is any of them going to get into your, uh, your field of expertise? Um, well, my, uh, second daughter is, is, is majoring in theater. And my fourth and fifth daughters just finished um, their high school musical, uh, Mean Girls, in which they I played. saw it on your Facebook page. Yeah, you're, yeah. Really, you're, you're really promoting that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was able to direct it as well, which was fun. Um, but uh, yeah, my, my 15-year-old daughter played Katie Heron, the, the, one of the leads in it. So that was, that was a lot of fun as well. So yeah, they might, be, they might be following my footsteps a little bit. So how does that, like, uh, quick segue, because I'm curious about these high school productions, Sure. How does that work? Do you have to get the rights to get to do the Mean Girls play from somebody? Yeah, there's a there's a you know musical theater international MTI is is the main one you go to to get the rights and yeah you just you just pay you know based on the you know what how many performances you're doing and what your average audience size is and you give them the royalties and then they send you the materials and then you can produce the play. And then so they, they you have to pay like it's even for high school productions you still have to pay them I guess. Yeah, musicals are expensive. I mean, I'm sure it was at least like twenty five hundred dollars to put that on, but to the, pay for, them just, to just for the rights. Yeah, just for the rights. Yeah. And then, but then you get the you get the they don't take any back end from the. Oh no, yeah, whatever you raise in box office, you get to keep. You know, and of course you have to pay your staff and whoever's you know sure. involved in there. But yeah. I'm not um, saying you're going to make money. It's a high school production. So <laughs> like, yeah. But... yeah. So, yeah, no, it's 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 a lot of fun and great experience for the students as well. Are you allowed to like? You can't change anything. You can't change a couple lines here, a couple lines there. You have to stick with the. Yeah, that's one of the main differences between film and theater is like when you when you buy a script to produce from somebody, you buy it, you own it, and you can change anything you want. You can you know rewrite the entire thing and just accept the title. But in uh, theater, it's licensed, so um, you cannot change a thing without permission. Yeah. But then again, I'm sure there's not like someone coming to Colorado to say, I don't know, that line they said <laughs> they and they said them, but but you're right, no, right, you know. But, it, it could be you you could be on the hook for that, but you know, we, we try not to change change. But you could change the gender though, I guess, right? They're not gonna Yeah, in fact, we had tw you know 20, 24 people in the cast, and only two of them or three of them were guys, and so we had to, you know, gender swap some of the roles a little bit. You gotta get more guys in theater, man. I know, I know. Your but, football uh, team's doing terrible. Like, like, like get them to go to the theater. Right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. Yeah, that was a, it's always a challenge. So, um, yeah. but yeah, no, we made it work. And, and the guys that were with us were great. And uh, yeah. Yeah, cool. All right. Well, what are you, what, what are you working on now? Are you working on something else now? So I have a feature screenplay that I've written um, that I'm hoping to produce next year. It's called The Pass. It's a supernatural thriller. It takes place out in the mountains here in Colorado. Um, in the meantime, I'm actually, <laughs> excuse me, I'm working on a, uh, a, uh, rom-com that we can shoot in Aspen and at Christmas time. So it'll be like that, you know, Christmas and Aspen rom-com, um, and, uh, like a Hallmark movie kind of thing. Yeah. Kind of, kind of like a Hallmark, well, you know, it'll hopefully a little more substantive than your typical Hallmark, but we hope to kind of sell it to the Hallmark crowd anyway. Hey, don't, don't, don't be, don't do, don't be crapping on the Hallmark movies. <laughs> no, yeah. they do great. They do great business. In They're fact, a million I know dollar industry, who, right? So no, a guy who lives in Aspen, who has a production company that sells 40 movies a year to Hallmark. I bet. Oh. I bet. See, but I always want a Hallmark movie where the guy and the girl don't get together in the end. They're like, you know oh, what? We had a good time, but I think it's time for us to go our separate ways. Well, you know, that's that that would be interesting. It wouldn't be a comedy, I guess. You know, it might why be. A... Why, why wouldn't it be a comedy? <laughs> well, it could, I suppose. But usually, yeah. in comedy, everyone gets married in the end, or whatever. No, but that's the whole thing. It's it's like you know what? We've evolved as a as a couple, and you know what? It's time for us to, like to to merge. Go go find our dreams. Yeah. There's a reason why they're breaking up. Like he's got to go become a horse rancher. She's got to become an actress in Hollywood. And then actually, they... that's uh, that's kind of the plot of La La Land. Which there you is go. A... 
rom coms. Right? They did not get together in the end. They so. did not get together in the end because maybe on something. She needed to go off and do her thing. She wouldn't have been famous. She wouldn't have been the the actress that she was if, if she stayed with them. So, right, exactly. Well, um, yeah. So we're, we're hoping to shoot that this December <laughs> and then get that out the out the door. You know, sometime early next year. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Otherwise, I'm you know helping. I uh, got I got writing partners, so I'm helping them. You know, put their work forward and and that sort we're of thing. Busy. So, yeah, yeah. Trying to stay busy. And I'm not going to say say your the the, the your address um, where you live, but I love the name of your of the of the street that you live on. You don't don't say anything. <laughs> just like I just love the the name of the street that you live on. I wish oh, my name you. the street of my name was was named after that. So yeah, it's fun. It's the whole neighborhood is named after animals. Oh really? So, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Only in Colorado. All right, man. Right. Well, thank you very much. Great film. Uh, really nicely put together. Nice cinematography. Nice shot shot selection. Obviously, thank good you. performances. Great post production, all levels. Uh, I hope the film serves you well and uh, keep going. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. You tell your lead actor to uh, she should probably venture off to, to the West and uh, get an agent because she's uh, she's very talented. She's she's about to go to Tisch and at NYU, so uh, hopefully okay, go east then. Yeah, some doors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She can get all some right. Thank you her. so much. All right, man. Thank you so much. All right. Take care.